So now let's talk about the use of the const keyword versus the read-only keyword. See here I have a library that I've defined some constant values. And in one case I'm using a const, and the other I'm using a static read-only. And these, though on the surface, appear to act very similarly, they're actually pretty different. The idea behind a read-only is a read-only is a value that can be set, but is set at runtime. And it can be set via code. So in this case for the read-only, we're just giving the success a value of zero. But we could have computed that as long as we can compute it the first time it's accessed. The const is different than that, in that a const value has to be baked in during compilation. And it's during compilation of not only this library, but anyone who uses this library. Let me show you what I mean by that. We've got another project here that has a reference to this library. And so when we use these constants, and when we run this, we're going to get those values that we saw, a constant of negative 1 and 0. One of the things that's not obvious is here in the const app, the success here is read from the assembly. So this referenced assembly computes that value the first time someone asks for it and then returns the value and returns that same value over and over again. It's read only, no one can change it, it's set in stone. But because failure result, if you remember, is a const value, that means here in our application that references that, when we compile the const app, it replaces this with the value that's in that assembly. This is a very important idea here. When the const app is compiled, it takes the value of the referenced const and places it in the assembly. It hard codes it here in this assembly because frankly, that is the fastest way to access that. Instead of having to go run code, get the value and return it. So in many ways you might think, oh, that makes const more interesting, right? It's going to be faster to access. It's set in stone. I'm great. But here's the problem. In large projects, when you're dealing with references that aren't necessarily in the same project, this can really bite you. Let's go ahead and change these values to, let's make the failure result mean minus 2, and let's make the success value 2, and let's rebuild our little piece. And let's assume for the moment that we aren't recompiling our const app. We want to deliver a new version of the const lib that we want to use, but nothing's changed in the const app, so we shouldn't need to recompile it. And we can see it here is the const lib is included in the same directory. It's packaged up with our const app. And so in theory, I should just be able to copy this. So if I say copy, so I copy that assembly over, let me replace it. Let's run our const app again and let's see what happens. The constant is still minus one. The read only is now two. So it's loading our new assembly and the read only is being read. But the constant, because it was baked in when we built const app, when we built the app that's referencing the other assembly, that is not being replaced. And so understanding the difference between these are going to give you the opportunity to decide whether to use one or the other. I typically prefer read-only even at the small performance difference because I know it's going to be more flexible in the way we package and we deliver our application out there, especially if I'm creating components for other people to use. If I'm a component part of an enterprise or I'm a commercial vendor creating components, I almost would never use a constant because of the chance that dropping in a new version of my assembly is not going to give the desired result if that constant changed. Make sense? Let's look at the next issue.